Very it's simple. Rihanna. Yeah. Did yeah. she seem like, like she was like a boss? Oh yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But I can't say so much, Jack. You're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> I signed a contract. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> This is the Pure World Podcast, and today I'm here with my friend, Samira. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. For anybody who's watching the podcast who doesn't know who you are, do you want to give like a quick rocket pitch? Um, I wasn't prepared. Okay, so there's a lot that I do. So I am a model. I work full time as a caseworker in Taunton for adults with substance abuse and mental health issues. I have alopecia. Um, and I have a dog named Rizzo. <laughs> Word. Yeah. Those are all awesome things. Yeah. The way that I know you most is definitely through modeling. Correct. We have worked together um, doing some like pure world photo shoots with Absolutely. backpacks. We've gone on definitely a handful yeah. of them. I'm interested like how you got started in modeling. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I guess I can say I used to model when I was little, uh, mm -hmm. like really little, like six, seven, eight. Um, remember what when products? Emerald Square Mall used to do oh, like okay. pageant type things? Yeah. I did those. Okay. And like had to cut up the t shirts and like do the runway in the mall. Yeah. I wow. did that. So when I was pageants? Mm hmm. Yeah. Pageants are an Which interesting concept. Yeah. Like, what, <laughs> like, what is up with I them? would never do it again. Were the pageants yeah, no. um, judged by like strange they were. men? Mm hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah, my mom was like super uncomfortable with it, so that won't be a thing ever. Yeah, no. Okay, yeah, that's that was, interesting. Yeah, it was like for that's a the horror years. stories that mm -hmm. like I see like yeah. TV shows like make a yes, mockery of yes, it nowadays. Yes. Yeah. So pageants no longer. I stopped doing that and then was cheering. Um, I cheered from five to senior year of high school, and after that went to college in Boston, and I broke my neck. Uh, my sophomore year of college. <laughs> so, what? yeah, I have a nice big scar down there. Wait, um, so you were cheerleading? I was. I was coaching and kind of trying to start a team. I went to Emanuel in Boston okay. and they don't have a team. Uh -huh. uh, so I was trying to, you know, make my own. Um, and then while I was out here coaching at the Y with Jesse So, um, and yeah, kind of just fell at practice and got up, dismissed the class with Jesse and went to my car, I drove to Sturdy, and they were like, yeah, you got to have surgery, you broke your neck. Oh my God. Um, yeah. So long story short, I have six screws back there um, and two metal rods. And a, I had a spinal fusion done uh, because I broke C5, 6, and 7. Mm -hmm. But you drove <laughs> yourself home? Yeah, I drove to the hospital. And I thought I broke my hand because my whole left arm went numb. So I'm, I'm used to falling. I was a cheerleader. So when I fell, I was just like, all right, whatever. Um, then I got to the hospital, made sturdy x-ray my hand. And right. they were like, honey, your hand's not broken. I was like, oh, okay. So then they're like, you can go home. But then at this point, it's, you know, God knows two hours later. And I was like, my neck kind of hurts. Can you all look at that? And they did um, an MRI and I shattered three vertebrae. Holy and they put me in a seat collar and was like, don't move. Like, did it hurt? Yeah. Or how did you not I didn't feel recognize it. I didn't that feel over it. the wrist? It was like, I felt my hand go numb. So I, I thought I broke that. I didn't feel anything in my neck until hours later when the adrenaline wore off from right. me thinking I broke my hand. And I was like, oh, shoot. Like, I guess I'm having surgery tonight. Is like, that a common injury for cheerleaders? Not that I've heard of, to be quite honest. Mostly it's concussions. Like, right. and I've had a handful of those. From but what? Like, getting kicked in the head, um, dropped oh. on your, yeah, yeah. Like, if you're standing there tumbling and girls are flipping in front of you, one of them might accidentally kick you. That happens. Or stunts falling and you get kicked that way. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, definitely had my fair share of broken ankles and concussions. Those are most common. Right. But, like, my neck, yeah, that was a different story. Mm -hmm. So, what what was your role usually on cheerleading teams? Were you, the, like, like... I was a flyer. Yeah. Yeah. I was okay. the top since I was little. I was tiny, but then I got a little chunky senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so then I was, I did both. I based and I was the top. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Do those um, flyers get hurt more often? Or you said sometimes people can get kicked in the head too. Oh yeah, absolutely. The bases get kicked all the time. If the flyers doesn't have her legs together and she, her knees aren't locked, she's knocking someone out. Like, geez. Yeah. And hopefully she gets caught while still hitting someone else in the face. 
Now, like, <laughs> what, what's like the, how would you compare cheerleading to gymnastics? Have you ever done gymnastics? I did gymnastics for like, I don't know, I took classes here and there, but that was never, they're completely different sports. Yeah. Um, gymnastics and cheer both have routines. Ours go up to two minutes and 30 seconds. I don't know what the rules are now. It's been a little bit, um, but that was when I was in high school. Um, they're, they're similar, but gymnastics, you don't pick up girls. You do it by yourself. Um, you're on the mat by yourself. There's yeah. no one you can hide from. Everybody can see you. Uh, cheerleading, you can put people in certain places so that judges can't necessarily notice everything that happens. Yeah. Um, for example, like girls who can't do a back handspring, you put them in the back. Right. Make them pretend like they're doing it back handspring. Yeah. Because if you have full team tumbling, you get more points versus. Wow. So four. it's a lot more of a team oh, absolutely. sport. Mm -hmm. Huh. And what do you think about like uh, becoming like a cheerleader for like a professional sports team? Like, is that. Okay. I can't same? even is lie that? to you. <laughs> I definitely auditioned as uh, not for the team itself, but as a calendar model for okay. the Patriots because right. they're separate. Uh -huh. You can audition to be a cheerleader and then you can audition to be one of the models that just do promo. Mm -hmm. um, completely different. Oh. But cheerleading is just dance. Um, right. That's what it was in college. We had a dance team that did mm -hmm. the sports, not cheerleading. And I was trying to get a cheer team. Um, gotcha. And they wanted to call us a palm squad and I was not having it. A what? <laughs> a palm squad. Oh. Yeah. Huh. So that was um definitely that derogatory. Different. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, no, thank you. Huh. Interesting. Back to the modeling. Mm-hmm. When did you start to take it a little bit more seriously? Or do you even take it seriously? Um, What's your perspective yeah, on modeling? Yeah, so it was after college. Once I got home, I started work. Um, it kind of picked up on Instagram was really where it first started. Instagram, I got a little, you know, clout on Instagram. I hit like 5K or something. Mm -hmm. um, that was cool. And then I was getting likes and comments. And then I was like, well, I might as well make money off of this if I'm going to spend my time doing it. Yeah. So then applying for agencies, getting pictures taken, trying to do everything every realm and different type of phot photography you can think of uh, from high fashion to boudoir to, you know, um, holiday themed stuff mm -hmm. uh, all over the place. So then once I started getting clout off of that, I was like, okay, let me apply to get signed. And then I got signed with MMG in New York. Mm -hmm. I've booked jobs for Zipcar, Fenty recently. You'll see that in a minute. It'll come out in a couple of days. Um, Avino, I did stuff for their website that's up there currently. Um, and then like local stuff like boutiques and different mm -hmm. um, brands. And then um, like there's um, a place next to Providence Place Mall. I can't even think of the name. I've done so many over in that area, but a bar where I've done like right. hand modeling. Gotcha. Um, so, I mean, if it's paying me, I'm not going to say no to it, especially right. off of not doing much. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, I was during our last podcast interview with Wes Woodson. We were, he's a uh, professional public speaker oh, wow. and we were having a conversation about agents in okay. that industry and how he personally actually doesn't have an agent and he made that conscious decision. What is your perspective on agents, especially like in the modeling industry? Do you feel like having an agent is the best decision? I don't. So freelance models are killing the game right now. You don't necessarily need someone unless you know how to build your own following and your own, you can have conversations with people. You don't really need an agent. Um, Instagram, TikTok, people go viral from doing nothing. Yeah. Um, and get paid for doing so on YouTube. You think they had an agent, someone to teach them how to get there? Most likely not. Um, my agency I use because they they have access to certain brands. Um, brands don't release their options for models to the public anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want bigger brands, you have to go through an agent who has the connections to that brand. Um, and agencies will never tell you they have the ac access. You just got to take the risk and sign that paper. Right. Yeah. And when you sign that paper, it's for what? A percentage of yes. your future earnings? Correct. Uh, percentage of whatever job you do that you're still signed with them with. Yeah. Uh, so what if they don't job, generate it? It doesn't matter. Any mm -hmm. modeling revenue mm -hmm. that you make Correct. goes into your agent. It, depending on the type of agency as well. Yeah. So like MMG is non-exclusive, which means I can sign with seven other agents in New York mm -hmm. as long as they're all non-exclusive. Um, so I can book my own private work and not tell them about it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if they know about it or the person who hired me reaches out to them, they automatically get the 20%. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then they pay me after. Right. Yeah. For Pure World, I reach out to musicians 
okay. um, occasionally to like compliment their music, but then to also say like, we would love to use it yeah. in some of our videos. And a lot of the musicians that I reach out to, I don't reach out to large scale musicians okay. to begin with. Yeah. Like <laughs> usually like it, less than a hundred thousand followers. That's who I would be reaching out to. And Honestly, a lot of the music that I find on my Spotify Discovery Weekly okay. are artists with like three to 5,000 mm -hmm. followers. And those are like my favorite, yes. like no, hidden gem yeah. artists are so cool. But um, every now and then, like maybe one out of every eight people I reach out to will say, yeah, just reach out to my uh, agent Oh yeah, and send their, send my agent an email and their agent is trying to get them money. Yes, no, of course. It's they like, work for the agent works for them, but they get paid if they get paid. So. Right. And so I could definitely see why an agent would be like, "Oh, this brand wants to use your music. You can get paid for that." Yes. Yes. Um, and it makes sense as like an artist that like to have somebody with a business mind looking and handle out. that for you absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. But from my perspective, if like I'm just not going to, like, I'm not going to use I'm you. I'm not going to yeah, email correct. your agent because I just, so it's about like either building your own network or it's about just the money. And I don't charge everybody who I right. shoot with. Absolutely not. Like if I'm interested in the topic or what they're using or the, the any of the, the, what they have, I'm going to collab. It doesn't right. always necessarily have to be money. No. Um, because if you're signed with usually an exclusive agency, won't even let you do collaborations. Mm. So that's definitely something to keep an eye out for. Now, you're a full time case manager at the same I time. Am, yes. Do you ever foresee there being a future where you go full time model? I would love to. Um, as long as it reality, pays the though? mortgage. Yeah, like, what yeah, is that? Like, what is, is that realistic? It is. It is. Absolutely. I mean, you'd have to be doing a lot um, right. because, okay, I'll give you a number. Um, Avino paid $2,100 okay. for one day. That covers my mortgage. Yeah, that's a great so, day. One of the, I book once every month, something like that. So I need to book something like that every week in yeah. order for it to pay sustainable right. amount of money for me to live. Yeah. And booking once that once every once a week would be once lovely. A week. Yeah. Something like that. Yes. Yeah. Because if you could book something like that once a week, that's like And then have six days off. Like and then make money off of social media and make money off of, you know, Instagram offers subscriptions that's now. A dream. So that's a thing. Yeah. Um so oh, I, I have right. subscribers on Instagram. Wait, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. talk about that <laughs> real quick because I see it all the time yep. in my notifications that so and so it opened got, up. Mm -hmm. And actually we were we got the thing oh, where you it's did. like Open up your subscriptions you for Pure World. I, I haven't yet, and I don't know if we will. It is something that, like, I love the idea of okay. creating subscription-based, yes. high-quality premium content. That's, like, what we definitely will do. But I've seen so many um, offers of, like, people who have opened up their subscriptions, but I haven't felt driven to subscribe to anyone. And okay. part of my... Part of my hesitancy is that I don't know if the people who who have the subscriptions are taking them seriously. Yeah. And like, how am I going to trust that whatever I pay, whether it's 99 cents or, or yeah, 20 10 bucks, 99, yeah, yeah like yeah. it could be anything. How do I, how do I trust that this is going to be legit? And I guess like there's Patreon, there's only fans. There's like, what, and Instagram there's, doesn't allow any of that, by the way, I got flagged for even posting a picture in a sports bra. Okay. So like Instagram does not allow any of that it's type very, of content like, in the wholesome. subscriptions. Yeah. It was a wholesome. bikini pic on mine and nope, removed. Interesting. Yeah. And I got blocked from using it for like two days. They so, were like, you can't use the subscription <laughs> option. I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. Yeah. yeah. So it, they don't want any content like that. So what, in your mind, like what, would you like to provide with your subscription? I asked my people who subscribed right off the jump what they wanted. Nice. Um, I got a lot of like your day to day stuff, like you in the morning before your makeup's on, brushing your teeth, what you're wearing for the day, um, driving. They asked for very like just behind the scenes of what I normally yeah. post because on Instagram, it's very, you know, dolled up Instagram, you know, model type esque stuff. Yeah. Um, so for them to see me normal sitting on my couch, that's what they wanted. Uh -huh. um, so that's what my subscription is for the most part. I mean, they do get DMs, but like that's separate. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I think there's a lot of potential there. Um, 
I would just want to make sure that if we opened up like a pure world subscriptions that we're actually providing worth, yeah. some value. And yeah. I think what's really cool about that at a minimum is anybody who's willing. I mean, what, is there a minimum that you can charge per month? Um, Maybe 99 cents. I think cents. it was 99 cents. Yeah. Because yeah, they gave you options to pick one a of the lot prices. Of people, I see a lot of people with it's only 99 oh, cents. Okay. Mine's like 4.99. Yeah. And I think it definitely like says what that. Yeah. That value to expect is, yes. I mean, I think I like the idea of like just people opting in no, to seeing something because like from our perspective, we've got 20,000 followers and like if a thousand of them yeah. opted in to say like, Hey, we want a little bit more. That would be great for us because right. then we can create and tailor content for those people who are most interested in. Correct. So, I don't even And you see can make it. separate group chats as well. There's a whole yeah, bunch of options the group on chat there. Yeah. Thing sounds yeah, cool. There's a ton of options. And w- then you can unlock stuff. So like say you post it privately for subscribers only, not on your story, but privately. Um, you can unlock it so people can see it before they subscribe. Um, to give them an idea of like what oh, type like of content it is. Peek. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely neat. I think there's that's that's definitely a direction that a lot of social media platforms are going. Just Agreed. in general, people are creating their own communities. It is, exactly. One thing that we've messed around with is having like SMS. Okay. Um, like you can sign up for our S- our SMS messages yeah. and then we can send a message out to everybody who's okay, see, subscribed. That's cool. Yeah. And really at the end of the day, what we are, fa- like the challenge we're faced with is how do we communicate with our community? Because- we have all we have twenty thousand followers on Instagram, but when we post a a post, like a thousand max yeah. even get reached, and no, so that's that's a one twentieth. I mean, that's five. It's terrible. No, yeah, you, the algorithm on Instagram is wild. Sometimes. So for some reason, we can't connect and communicate with the community, and so yeah, that's what that's kind of what we're facing. Yeah. So in order for people who follow you to see your stuff more often, they have to share it and save it. Mm -hmm. Um, so like if they share, there's like a little option to save on your post, they have to be hitting that in order to see your stuff on their feed. Interesting. Um, so if they most likely like half my followers all the time message me, I haven't seen your stuff in so long. I'm like, it's probably because you liked a similar content and Instagram was like, Oh, Hey, here's hers as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, they have to save it. Yeah. Maybe you do some sort of like I don't know if you do giveaways ever. I I did one probably years ago. It's been a minute. Well, since we I've just done started yeah. doing some giveaways <laughs> like a lot more frequently with our creators. So if if you'd like to do one, more than happy to. But that is one option you can bake into the giveaway. Is you have to save it. Yeah, yeah. I would absolutely. So that that could be something that. And then like yeah, having people put on their your post notifications. Mm-hmm. There's all sorts of like yeah. I mean, you're a personal brand at the end of the I, day. Yeah, no. Do I, you, I like, where do you foresee yourself taking your personal brand in the next I'm of open years? to whatever. And I think yeah. that's my issue. Um, hmm. it, I don't see it as being a strength because I've been open to too much. Um, I don't shoot nudes or anything like that, but I do, I'm willing to shoot a music video or do content. I would right. love to be in a horror movie. That's like the ultimate goal is yeah, a horror movie, but sick. right. Playing the little evil character that like <laughs> ends on the floor. That's oh my right. gosh. <laughs> that's what I want to do. Um, but like I've, I do mostly as far as paid work goes, it's print, um, and video without sound. Um, Mm -hmm. so that's what I've been booking more of. And it's hard to book when you don't look like the typical person. Hmm. Um, I see getting, I get callbacks, but I don't get booked as often as I think I would, because most of the time they're looking for that girl next door, the blonde hair, blue eyes, or the brunette, or their specific hair characteristics that they look for in the postings. And I'm like, I can't even apply to this. Mm -hmm. So that's been difficult. But I mean, as far as future goes, I'd love to do this full time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So wait, so have you ever acted before um, done any acting? I mean, kind of not really. Zipcar was like, they took us places and it wasn't acting. They just kind of wanted to see us like lifestyle stuff. Like I juggled at the golf course. Sick. That's in a video on an ad on Zipcar's page. And they also took us to a, um, a roller rink and I was roller skating mm-hmm. for like two hours and that's what they recorded. Cool. They didn't ask me to like do anything extra than right. what I was just being me. Right. Um, so no script or anything mm. like that, but so we'll see. Well, I've been thinking about acting too, because the way that like I see it is if you can act and get landed in some sort of mainstream 
anything, mm-hmm. there's instant publicity. Oh, absolutely. It's like the quickest way to get your it name is. out there. It it's is. like the most efficient way <laughs> to yeah. gain a following. Because, I mean, I guess like you could gain a following organically on TikTok. Oh, yeah. It takes some work. It takes some work and it definitely takes some luck and it takes some like confidence of like really putting yourself out Mm -hmm. there and just like throwing stuff at the wall (laughs) and seeing what will stick. But I I think like if you could land something in Hollywood. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that'd be cool. Now, I don't think everybody is eligible to do something like that. I don't I don't even know if I am like I, I don't know. I've never really acted. Yeah. Either. I d- I've done one commercial actually. Okay. For my college. Oh, wow. And okay, I had the neat. line and um, it was, it was Babson College's hundredth year anniversary. Oh, wow. Okay. So Babson was founded in. Um, Do you remember? In, <laughs> yeah, 1920. Okay. I think. And, and so in 2020, they had their centennial, like yep. their, their hundred year party and their commercial and. And then I was like the first person in it. And I say, best year yet. I'm done. <laughs> and, and then everybody after me says like, yeah, best year and yet. And does it. Okay, 20, that's and then, lit. And then like the last thing is like the president of the college, he's like, 2020 will be the best year yet. Oh, but man. we're just getting started. I can't. <laughs> and How then cheesy. COVID hits. <laughs> Oh no, I didn't even put two and two together. Oh my goodness. And it was just like the worst wow. year ever. Yeah, no. <laughs> You're like everybody dropped out. We were like home. seniors, like, like oh my seniors God. in college get sent home. People are Wow, like, right on the news and everything. That's crazy. Global pandemic. <laughs> Every day, Best like, year I, yet. yeah, on television, they're like telling you how many people died today. Um, I know, literally. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Yeah, so that was my acting experience. Okay. Um, well, that's fun. Yeah, it was all right. I thought it was really cool to be on set. Someone did like my hair and makeup. Yeah. yeah. I was really fascinated by the director, too, and just the organization because this, this, like, set, they were probably 30 to 50 people. Uh, yeah, no, they, yeah, it's usually a like, ton. Lights, mm-hmm. camera. That's how the Fenty set was. Yeah. Like if you go on Fenty's Instagram right now, you can so kind of see it. Rihanna's brand, her like lingerie brand. What? Yeah, but I didn't do the lingerie. She just, I can't tell you. It's not out yet. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. But yeah, no, Fenty did a shoot and it was mostly video. Um, And the set is ginormous. It was this big giant factory. There was tires. Wait, it's Rihanna? And, yeah. <laughs> it's on her Instagram. She released a little portion of it, but like it's not out until I think next week. So I, I can't say anything yet. So you, but have you met her? Yeah, she was there. No. Yeah, way. that's why there was a ton of people. Oh, what? Like, I couldn't Tomorrow. have my phone. Nothing was out. Like, yeah. And there was food everywhere I was eating, but like otherwise we couldn't have our phones. Like it was, yeah, it was a lot. Okay, so you couldn't like take photos no. with her. She's working. Yeah. She was working. Yeah. And was she like working, working? Like was she, Kinda, did she seem like, like she was like a boss? Oh yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But I can't say so much, Jack. You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> I signed a contract. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, this, wait, when does this release? When it's is your, your Fenty campaign? It's Fenty Sport. It's Fenty Export. Do you so know when it releases? I have no idea. They don't, okay. I signed a contract. They okay, get all rights it. to all the pictures. I have yep. pictures in the outfit. But got I it. can't post them okay. until the outfits are released. They're not okay, even got for it. sale Yeah, yet. because yeah. this podcast yeah. won't be released this okay. week. So yeah. like well, maybe next they're week. They're not for sale yet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm thinking next week. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, that's exciting. I would love to follow up with yeah. you on that yeah, sometime I'll publicly. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's really cool. Because I think like when you start to get connections and just like experiences that like our resume worth and portfolio yes. Worth, yes. worth and, and you have those those connections that can maybe lead to the next connection. It's hard though, because when I book or when any model books these jobs, we don't get the rights to anything. Mm -hmm. We don't get the rights to the pictures. We don't get the rights to the video. We don't even get told when it's released. They just release it. You just got to stalk their pages to find it. Wow. Mm -hmm. And screenshot if you want to use it. Huh? Like, yeah. Oh yeah. So so I don't get sent any of the content after. No, Nope. Everything is used like Zipcar stuff. They didn't tell me or tag me. That's not a thing. They mm-hmm. just release it and it's used in whatever ads they want. Right. And so Zipcar has five year usage. Avino, same thing. Fenty, I think, was two year usage. So anytime for when I shot to whenever they feel like releasing it, they can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But can you reference it in like a portfolio? You can. Yeah. If you can get a picture. Yeah. If you can find one and screenshot it and it doesn't look terrible. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Wow. Now, are you making connections with um, 
like hiring managers yeah. or you know yeah because like it's people different who are people who you? book it yeah right. so like the stuff for fenty was at the studio in brooklyn called gum uh-huh. like g-u-m studios so like oh absolutely all of them are on my instagram now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. those yeah. are the connections mm-hmm. that that can be like yes like if you did a good job at least yeah then no. like thinking, <laughs> okay the next big yeah like we want her booking, yeah. yeah booking mm-hmm. yeah they can they can get you situated with that what uh what would be your dream collaboration do you have like a like dream brands that you would like really love to work with um, I don't think so. Like I said, I'm pretty much open. The only thing I really want to do is a scary movie. Like I want to be dressed up in blood mm-hmm. and gore and do something wild. Yeah. So is like Halloween your yeah. favorite? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. What's your favorite Halloween movie? I can't even. No, I don't like the basic like hocus pocus and none of that. No, I want to watch something scary that I'm going to cry. Uh-huh. Like- <laughs> yeah, I've seen like a lot um, of like the classic ones. Okay. Like... Like Paranormal Activity and yeah, yeah, seen, Scream. Yeah, and, I've seen okay. those for sure. There's like Halloween, which is like a classic, yeah. like Freddy Krueger. I don't those know. Are the like Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's like a pretty legit like one. Those. What about like the, the Exorcist? That one wasn't the original. So the in college, original. I read the original book from oh, like the, yeah, from back back in the day. It was the language and it was that. wild. It was for, for class. Yeah. Oh. So the it was um a literature class That's, and I, it was unbelievable hard like I would listen to it and read it at the same time in my kitchen what? cooking trying to because it was hard to figure out what the heck they were talking about because the language was way far out like I had no idea what it was half the time what do you mean like Shakespearean type yeah, language like, like really old, old extremely old oh wow I didn't even know it was it was like bad that. yeah the way it, the words are phrased and the sentences are put together they're not coherent until you read before and after. So like you might read that middle sentence, but you're not going to remember what they were talking about until six lines down. And then you'll finally catch up, but then you'll be behind for the next paragraph. It was hard. Um, I've never read it's a It's definitely scary book. hard. Oh, it was really good. It's like really good. I yeah. Like let me watch the movie. The scariest, mm-hmm. Like it's scary to read a book. <laughs> than just to watch a movie because the, reading the book, a book is better. Is like the book in is your better. Mind the book your, is way your better. Imagination is like putting it all together. Yeah. As long as the writer is really good at explaining it and is. Like giving details it and stuff. It was, the book is way better. Yeah, the very first Exorcist movie doesn't do the book justice. They skip parts. Like it, there's missing pieces that are mm. in the book that are not in the movie, like every movie. Interesting. But the book is really good. Definitely recommend. How about that writer? Uh, what's his name? You know. Oh, God. He wrote a book called On Writing, which is about oh, how okay. to write. How Like, it's about his, his philosophy on okay. writing. But he's, like, one of the most prolific and prominent, like, scary. Oh, it's a scary writer. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Oh, I'd be interested, you though. Would so know. if you do, f- I know, I probably he's do, like, but I'm like, it's like, like time. <laughs> like, have you ever heard of um, Pet Cemetery? Okay, I read that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I read okay, that. Yeah. I read that. But I didn't watch the movie, but I read the book. Okay. The movie is like pretty good. Okay. And geez, it's going to kill me. I know. Now you got to Google it because I have no idea. But I did read that book. I don't have a. I don't have an assistant on, on deck right now. Robbie, where <laughs> yeah, are you? Yeah, that's Rob's fault. <laughs> he knows where he's supposed to be. Pet Cemetery. Um, Stephen King. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? That was, there's people watching are going to kill us for that one. <laughs> Like That's going to be all the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Acting like they like horror. Yeah, yeah. No, literally. No, but you know Stephen yeah. King, right? Yeah. So his book on writing tells, I didn't know he did it, that. it teaches, I, I read it in like a, a writing class in high okay. school. And basically the book is about his philosophy on writing. Oh, wow. And how okay. he writes these crazy stories. To like attract these stories. people into continuously reading. And, yeah. Yeah, being it, yeah, because he's such a good writer. Yeah. And the most fascinating strategy of how he writes is he writes without an end in mind. Okay, and just kind of continuously goes until and, it happens. And just like left turn here. Okay. <laughs> like we're just going to like totally flip it out. Oh like, my goodness. Yeah, you no. know, wake up in the, in the next morning. That's how I live like, my life. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. That's he, he probably just like wakes up in the morning and like picks up the paper from where he left off and is like, all right, now what if... But yeah, no, honestly. Like what if this like, happened? And then, and then just, just totally like, And this is it. what would happen after that if this happened, but I'm going to make it be the opposite of what exactly, you think it would Exactly, happen. because like if you if you have a uh, an end game, then it's too predictable. It is. No, I agree. And it's it's fun and it's fluid and it keeps people 
on their toes. Okay. And so that was like, that was a really, really interesting writing tip. Yeah, no, it sounds like it. And I've taken that tip with me to write like, like rhetorical papers. Okay. But it doesn't work the same way yeah, because it's, it's not good for, it's not good for like letting your reader know what they're about to read. And that's like usually, what, if you're writing yeah. like a thesis paper. No, you don't do that. Just yeah. for a thesis. And then meanwhile, <laughs> like in the last paragraph, yeah. I, I, oh my I goodness. whip them The complete around. opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. No. It's but just like, it's, 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 it's interesting. It, yeah. Everybody has their own way of expressing But that's why themselves. people are addicted to his books mm -hmm. and they just kind of continue reading and you can't really put it down because you are completely unknowing of what's going to happen next. You have no idea. Well, well then I was actually, now I'm thinking about it. I just listened to, I, I was just watching a master class with Malcolm Gladwell. Okay. Are you familiar yeah, with him? How did that he, go? he writes uh, Blink and Outliers. Okay. And yeah. Like, I started reading Outliers. Yeah. I wasn't super into it. Yeah. yeah. I, I was forced to, to read it for a class. Okay. And I actually think I just listened to the audio yeah, book while I, I was like painting I, an entire right. house. But it's it's a pretty monumental okay. book. Like if you're, yeah, I if started you're ready it. for I got like it, half through, half it has through. some really important lessons in it. What are you trying to say, Jack? No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. His, his, he was also talking about how he writes and very similar to Stephen King. Okay. Doesn't necessarily have an end game. He just goes with the flow and like the the way he researches, he researches uh, very openly. He's like a sleuth. He's like a detective yeah. trying to find the answer. He doesn't know what the answer is because if you go into your research of whatever you're trying to research with an expectation of what the correct answer will be, then you're going to twist all of the research oh, yeah, to and be the information a, a to match to what, yeah. what you want the no, reality to be. So rather, if you go in with an open mind... And just kind of like go along. See what with the you ride. find and then develop an answer based yeah. on what is. Yeah. yeah. And he said that sometimes when he does this research, he'll he'll research one thing that he think will support his argument and then go okay. all the way down a rabbit hole and then realize at the end his, this is not even relevant. <laughs> And he'll leave it in his books. Oh my goodness. And yeah. See, just that's like, the, the last sentence will be like, and this actually isn't that relevant. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's my life. <laughs> but that's, it's an exploration. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we can have necessarily an end goal for anything. No. Yeah. Because life changes daily, hourly at that. Like there's no way. Yeah. That's why I'm kind of open to whatever. Kind What's of one of the most comes. recent life changes that you've experienced? I guess the house burning down in January. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. That was um, definitely an experience. Wait, to say so, the least. so most people don't know about this, but I, I do think like we reposted like a, a Kickstarter campaign okay, to help yeah. out. Um, basically you had a fire in yeah. your home. So I was at the, I was renting my parents' house. My parents owned the house. I was renting an apartment in the house. I went to the gym and got a text message from my neighbor and the house was on fire. I just raced home and my dog was bloody and a mess and it was a disaster. The neighbor upstairs, their dog attacked my dog. Um, Rizzo got like eight staples in his head, oh a whole gosh. bunch in his ears. Um, and then my parents are in Florida, mind you. So mm -hmm. I was in charge. Um, had someone come get the dog, pick him up and take him to the emergency vet for me while I stayed and dealt with, you know, the police, the lawyers, the ambulances, the uh, the news was out there um, because it's a three family. My house was like where everybody in that neighborhood went to growing up. Right. Um, all the neighborhood kids came over there. We had a pool, a trampoline. We had bikes and dirt bikes and jet skis and growing up. So that was where we hung out. Yeah. And it was definitely um, a lot. I uh -huh. got my dog after I, the house probably caught on fire around eight and I left at around one in the morning once everything cooled down. So I went back in, grabbed what I could um, and went to my parents' house with my dog and I didn't sleep that night. Uh, it was definitely a disaster. Wow. Um, how, yeah. how much was salvageable? Um, not, uh, not my furniture. All the furniture was done. Um, I had the apartment on the first floor, so my stuff just got drenched and then molded overnight. Drenched in? In water. Yeah. So the, the upstairs was the fire and the whole upstairs was in flames. Um, oh the roof gone, gosh. the walls are gone, the floor. Yeah. So it didn't so then collapse. The, no, the, the building God. didn't thank collapse. Thank God. Yeah. My parents would not have liked that. No. Um, 
just the roof is on fire. All the walls, everything in that apartment was trash. Right. Um, and then the fire department finally showed up and they put the fire out. But how much water they used, it's, you know, went through all the other floors because uh, it's a three floor house. <laughs> so that That's was um, that was definitely a, a mess. Um, so my stuff was soaked and then it was January. So everything molded and oh it God. got real bad. Um, so yeah, wow. no, the furniture was all trash. Any idea how it started? The fire department wouldn't tell us, um, to be quite honest with you though, the tenants who lived on that floor, uh, were getting evicted and mm. they had threatened to burn the house down before my parents went to Florida. What? And then the next day my parents left and that night the house caught on fire. Yeah. Um, so they are gone. Uh, they yep. were getting evicted though. And they, my parents had went to court and paid all this uh, money to like get the eviction paperwork done. And yeah. And they were also hoarding. So that could have had something to do with the fire. Mm -hmm, you couldn't mm -hmm. see the floor in the apartment. It was disgusting. Would you like to become a landlord someday? I, to be when I, I just bought a house. And so when I was about to buy mine, like I wanted a three family, but with right. the market that we were dealing with and still are dealing with, there was nothing yeah. under 400 K. Right. Like it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Um, so I bought my little single family and i'll be mm -hmm. right until yeah yeah that's good you that's know. good yeah being a landlord is it's a lot it's no a absolutely lot. especially if you, that, like, if you pick bad tenants yeah, who light your that. house on fire yeah <laughs> not literally. not that they not that we know that they did literally but um uh, yeah so that was yeah. not fun um but the tenants that were there prior were always mostly good people i can't say always because we have you know i have a few right. but for the most part they were decent people mm -hmm. um most of them got along with us they didn't have access to the yard they had a different entry so that was you know completely separate mm. uh so you know me and my little brother can have the yard there you um, go but otherwise i would do it absolutely yeah uh, yeah to generate some revenue and yeah, so like, it's pay such my like mortgage a, yeah absolutely. it's something that that people in our generation are definitely doing no, I and agree. they're definitely thinking about mm -hmm. it's just like yeah they're the people who have the means to buy the house and be yes, the landlord yes and the people who like I would do it. Don't it's have just that opportunity yeah, yeah. So like, I bought my single family and we'll be fine for now. Yeah, yeah. Until you know, we'll see. Uh, the other thing, I don't know. I might end up buying like trailer homes and mm -hmm. like using them for Section Eight and letting HUD rent them out and collecting my money that way. Yeah. Um, or even buying land and then eventually buying the homes to put on the land. Yeah. Um, which is a better option, but the way interest is right now, <laughs> no one's buying anything, mm -hmm. and the market is sky high. So right, we'll see. Yeah, I, I do like the idea, though, of, like, tiny homes. I agree. And um, there's cool stuff, like, maybe even using, like, um, the train cars. What are no, they called? I've like, seen freight that. Yes. cars. Yeah. And you can, like, retrofit them and yeah, put windows in TV. them. <laughs> right? It's, it's interesting. And then what about, have you ever heard of Boxable? No. So Boxable is this interesting company. Oh, and God. <laughs> where basically, Boxable is interesting because they have these like home units that are, that are like, they're tiny homes, but okay. they can also be add, they can add on to each other. Oh, wow. Almost like a box, yeah. like a building box. Like toys that yeah. you can like connect. To yeah. Like, There's what? like a word for what it is. I, oh, I can't cool. think of it. But um, yeah, that's like an interesting solution to housing and, and like apparently they're going to be like they're very durable and like okay. can last a long yeah. time which See, is that's important. necessary no, and absolutely. then also what really drives the cost down is their mass manufacturability oh so because yeah there's not much material if it's just a little box yeah, yeah. No, that's kind of cool yeah it's like buying a home from home depot and be like i'm gonna put this together exactly. in my backyard and rent it like <laughs> <laughs> That'd be lit. Um, I can't stop laughing at my dog over there. He's oh my just goodness. been like, yeah, having like the time dragging of his life. shoes. He's he's trying to get our attention. Well, I think we should start wrapping this thing up. Okay, yeah. Is there we'll anything else that you want to talk about, or maybe like give a shout out to before we close things up, like where mm -hmm. people can find you, how they could support you? Oh, sure. I mean, my Instagram is real, like R E A L underscore Samira, spelled C E M Y R A, Marie, M A R I E. Um, everything, the links to everything, my Snapchat, um, TikTok, Facebook, mm -hmm. Amazon wish list, they're all on there. <laughs> um, just click the link in the bio. And then people can subscribe to you now, too. Absolutely. Oh, wait, can they? Did yeah, you they get can. That back? Oh, yeah, no, it's on there. Okay. It's been, yeah, it's been up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to watch her, like, what, driving? Or, yeah, exclusive you know, doing... videos behind the scenes <laughs> the real life yeah Samira. exactly <laughs> well thank you so much for her for coming on to this podcast uh, i really appreciate yeah, talking to you of uh, course. for those of you who's, who are watching or listening uh i'm jack 
I'm Samira. And this is the Pure World Podcast. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can shop all of our sustainably sourced adventure gear at pureworldshop.com. And thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Bye.